How did I, you start the homebrew? So I, well, I mean, uh, it's not a, uh, an, a glamorous story. Uh, <laughs> None of them are. Yeah. I, uh, at the time, at the time that I for, was really getting into beer, um, uh, I didn't really drink before I was 21. Just I, it just wasn't something that I was I wasn't in a group of friends that did it. And it just wasn't something that I was exposed to. Then I turned 21 and I started kind of seeing what was out there. Excuse me. What, what <laughs> was out there at that point? So time? this is the this is the point of the conversation. When, when I started drinking beer, uh, craft beer was limited. Um, I remember the first beer that someone bought me on my 21st birthday was a Newcastle. Oh, sure. Oh, and I remember Newcastle. drinking Newcastle and be like, mm. Nuki Brown. This isn't beer. This is something completely different. I've yeah. never had this before. That, that's when Newcastle was like good. Yeah. Well, and this was on draft. So it wasn't the skunked clear yeah. glass bottles. Yep. Um, and I, I, I went from that and I was like, I like dark beers. And so then I remember drinking uh, a Beta mm -hmm. Turbo Dog. Oh, yeah. We used to drink the heck out of that. Um, uh, Zingu, which was like a Brazilian Schwartz beer. So um, the X I mm -hmm. it, okay. Uh, and that was kind of the beginning of my journey into understanding beer and, and drinking beer as somebody who was doing it purposefully. I wasn't drinking to, to get drunk or to party. I was yeah. like, I want good beer. You, What's you, good beer? You drink for taste or you drink for waste? There you go. <laughs> nice. Uh, but getting so, drunk and partying is just an after effect. You can't I, I, be helped. <laughs> yeah, you're going to party. <laughs> At some way. point, I went to, uh, this is like in that same era, I went to Bonnaroo, and I remember walking back from a show to my tent at the end of the night, and there there was like a shakes down street, like gravel you know, road where people posted up and were selling sandwiches and whatever. And there was a guy selling beer, and he, he had uh, Sierra Nevada in a bottle, and he had Guinness nitro in a bottle Ooh, nice. and I bought one of each and I drank the Sierra Nevada first and I had never had a beer that was hot forward and I thought something was wrong with it. So <laughs> I didn't know. I just was like, this is, this one's bad. And then I'd popped the, the Guinness and I drank it as I was walking back my tent. I was like, this is really good. And then I got to the bottom and I was like clinking around. I was like, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God! The widget. That <laughs> that hippie put something in my beer. <laughs> a shard, there's and a then, shard of glass. And then in I there. laid in the in my you know tent, I'm like so high, waiting for the trip to start. Uh, <laughs> but no, much the nitrogen bubbles to your brain. Yeah, much like it, most homebrewers, once you get into it, uh, once you get into beer, you think, well, I want to try this. Like this, I I could do this, and I worked at the height at the time. Uh, we had a derby um, weekend where uh, I'd worked 12 hours every day. Um, it was right when, I think it was right after the guy tried to set his shoes on fire or something. <laughs> and so the airport wouldn't allow you to take liquids on. And Woodford Reserve hosted a party at the hotel where they gave everyone a pint of Woodford. So on Sunday, when everyone was checking out, they were like, I can't take this on the plane. You want this? Wow. And so me and a friend had accumulated all of these bottles of Woodford, went and got proper drunk after like <laughs> working 60 hours in four days. And I woke up the next morning and like, you know, a mouthful of gravel and, and head full of cotton and sat down and opened the computer and turned it on and checked the email. I was like, congratulations, you won. I was like, what? And I'd bid on a homebrew kit on eBay. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that was the beginning. Like that that's was a true like early two thousanders like homebrew. Yeah. So like, you uh, got so experience. you got drunk off uh, off Woodford. Yeah. Yep. Woodford. Decided to go on eBay and search for your passion. Yep. <laughs> I love and it. and from that point on, like it, every every free opportunity that I had, I was was either conceptualizing a recipe or trying to figure out okay, what's the next. A, you know, piece of equipment that I need. Cause I started like most people with extract and I was doing, you know, infusions in, in the, the kettle that weren't, you know, I wasn't doing anything near all grain and then was lucky enough to get in with some people that had bigger, better equipment. And then it became like collab brew days where let's get together and drink PBR for 12 hours and yeah, <laughs> and make 20 gallons of whatever. Yeah. So that was the beginning. And that, uh, you know, that that was 15 years of doing that before I ever 
uh, clocked in as a professional in any way, shape or form. Hell so yeah. see, I, I love, uh, homebrew days. Uh, we just had our buddy Nathan and, um, a few weeks ago on a different episode. And, uh, we were talking about the, the great homebrewing days that we have usually on Sundays in his garage. I, I show up, I sit down and watch them work.